Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, welcome back to my channel. Oh, um, all right, cool. So uh, this is my GS3 and it's changed quite a bit since the last time you guys have seen it. Uh, mostly for reliability's sake. So uh, to get right into it. So the most unreliable part of a GS3 or really any commercial grade machine is uh, this guy right here. So uh, if this is familiar to you, uh, what this is is a steam valve. So steam from steam boiler comes in from here and this lets it go out here and then through there, right? So um, these suck, honestly. Uh, if, you ever, if you ask any coffee tech out there, um, the majority of the work that they do is basically just rebuilding these. So there's lots of moving parts in here, um, lots of friction, lots of uh, parts that just need to be replaced. So uh, yeah. Gross stuff. Um, I've spent a lot of time working on these. Uh, this specific valve, I just rebuilt several times. Just didn't work very well. Um, so basically, alternatively, uh, what you can do is just basically replace all that with one moving part, which would be a solenoid valve, and then just having a button that just engages that. So I just have that button and yeah, turn on, turn it off. Um, the downside is you can't really, you know, control the flow very much, but the valve that I put in there is pretty small. The actual orifice that the steam flows through is pretty small. So, um, so the, the flow rate is a little bit lower than normal. Um, it's still like, you know, plenty useful. Um, but running at 2.3 bar, plenty high. Um, so it's very useful. And what's been great is I've actually been using this machine uh, I've been renting it out quite a bit to uh, pop-up events and it's been holding up really, really well. I haven't had to require any service on it whatsoever. Um, so there's some other stuff too that I have also made that keep this thing pretty damn reliable. Oh yeah, and before I forget, um, so you'll notice that I don't think there's ever been a GS3 in this color before. Uh, to some people's opinion, there's a reason for that. Um, but I love it, I mean it matches my also uh, popularly uh, ugly uh, EK as well. Um, so this uh, was just really some Amazon automotive um, uh, vinyl wrap. Uh, fortunately, all these panels are really, you know, angular. They can all come off really easily. So wrapping all this thing in vinyl is super easy and it's definitely like hit a lot of the scratches. This thing is really old. It's from 2008, uh, which is the first year. I believe the serial number is like in the 500s, which is very, very early. So this thing's been through a lot and it really looks a lot better with it being wrapped up. Granted, it's been beat up just a little bit, but it's hiding some dents, it's hiding some really deep scratches. Um, that's really been helping it to look a little bit more presentable in these pop-up events that it's been doing. Something else you might notice is if I run this guy, it doesn't really sound like a normal GS3. And that's because this guy actually has the pump out of a Seneso ES1 slash the, the new Slayer One Group. Uh, I think there might be a Nuevo Simonelli pump machine out there that has the same pump. Uh, I'll show you in a second. It's pretty great. Okay, so here's a little better view of what's going on inside. Uh, here's that pump that I was talking about. It's actually just kind of sitting in there right now, which is fine. It's been holding up just fine, but I do want to make some sort of mount to make it fit in, right? Uh, but yeah, it's really tiny and it's really quiet, um, relatively quiet. Uh, I just think it's much more of a pleasant sound compared to the uh, the gear pump that I fe featured in my first video. That thing really kind of sounds like a dental tool, whereas this one just has like a nice lower hum, more similar to a rotary pump, but not too rattly. I kind of like it. The way it's set up is, so I have the pump here and uh, it's a 24 volt DC pump, whereas the original one was 120, you know, high voltage going to the pump and it would just switch that on whenever the, uh, whenever the pump is requested to be turned on. Okay, um, so because of that, I have to transfer that high voltage to low voltage. And so the way that's being done is through this, uh, this AC to DC power supply right here. So basically that signal that com comes towards the pump in high voltage just goes straight into that power supply. It gets turned on every single time the pump is requested to be turned on. And then it immediately turns that into 24 volt into 
the, uh, the signal for the, for the pump. Um, if you're an electrical engineer, you might know that the, this is getting a little iffy because um, there's a concept called flyback where basically there's a huge spike of current every single time the pump turns off, which could like totally fry the power supply. Uh, frankly, I just threw this together with some parts that I had and thought, well, we'll see if uh, it even has the protection for that. Some, some power supplies can handle that. Apparently this one does because after all these hours of running this thing, the power supply is still totally fine. So um, every time I run it, the power supply turns on, turns off. Everything's been pretty much okay. Uh, the other thing you can see here is the, the solenoid valve that I was talking about in terms of the, the steam side. So this whole assembly over here used to live like that, right there, yep. And so you can kind of see where everything's been replaced. So I'm just using these John Guest fittings, which I mean, has been becoming much more common. Uh, you'll see a lot of these in the Micra. Um, some techs don't love them because they're plastic and not brass um, and copper. But uh, for one, I wanted to throw this together and have some flexibility in terms of where everything sits. It works pretty okay. So yeah, just having some John Guest fittings uh, and then some clear plastic tubing that, that goes through to this pretty dinky little solenoid valve. I think I only bought it for like maybe 30 bucks from Espresso Parts. It works. Uh, and it's up to the ratings that this is going through. Um, but again, the, the, the actual orifice that it's flowing through is pretty small. Um, and then, yeah, that kind of just flows right into a little T-fitting that goes up to the, the wand here. And then this is just an off-the-shelf um, latching uh, button that I got from DigiKey, pretty inexpensive. And it actually fits like just perfectly in the hole that the original um, knob was. So it, it's pretty pretty elegant the way it's all put together. Oh yeah, and if you're wondering why this guy is here uh, and why it's just zip tied to my frame, that's like a retrofit that Lamarzoko added a while back to have some more power stability on the electronics. Um, this machine actually has the older non-IoT electronics. Um, I just don't really need them and uh, I got my hands on well, backstory. When I bought this machine, uh, the board actually looked like this. Um, that's why I bought it, because it was totally fried. Um, I think I might have mentioned this in the last video. But, um, yeah, I mean, you can literally, there's a hole in it. Um, pretty common fault with these machines is the electronics sit right here. And uh, often the steam boiler will form a leak and then just drip down and just uh, black smoke. It smelled horrible. But had some friends uh, down at Technico in Nashville, really cool guys. Uh, they got my hands on a, uh, a bad board that had a bad component. Um, I might go into it a little bit more later, but uh, there's a really common failure uh, where basically that water will, if it doesn't blow up the board, it'll just kind of screw up one little part that is responsible for uh, detecting the water in the reservoir. So if you have that problem, uh, I believe there's been some posts on homebarista.com describing how to fix it. It's just like you just swap out one little part and it works just fine. And I have one of those boards that I swapped out that one little part and this board has been working just fine. Uh, it's pretty great considering these boards can be like five, 600 bucks, so. Okay, so there's one last pretty big thing that I'm pretty excited to show you. So uh, I'm just gonna let me take this off real quick. Um, so you guys know that a big reason I've been off of YouTube for a while is I've actually started my own business. Um, so that brew by weight video that I did a while back, um, there was a lot of interest and yeah, I've been selling those things now and there's quite a few out there, uh, which is super exciting. Primarily, a lot of Micra owners have been into it. Um, so there's a lot of Micras out there, uh, maybe a couple hundred that now have brew by weight, which is super cool. Would you look at that on the frickin' money? And it's also functional on this machine too. This little orange guy that's glowing red right now, he is the module that creates brew by weight. So basically this pairs my scale to my machine. So if I turn on my machine, 
or green. Uh, that means it's connected. So what it does is it automatically connects to whatever scale is nearby that it's supported. So any Akai scale, which there's a lot of them, in addition to Buku scales, which is what this guy is here. And essentially, when I start this, it automatically turns on the scale. And when it hits a certain weight, it'll automatically turn it off. And every single time it does these shots, it learns based off the last one to get a little bit more precise every single time. And uh, yeah, people have been loving it. So yeah, that's about all I got in terms of what I've done to this GS3 so far. I'd love to hear you guys' thoughts. If there's anything else you guys have done that you know make it a little bit more durable, a little bit more longevity. Uh, I'm all about that stuff in terms of machines. Uh, yeah, but yeah, I've been having a hard time balancing you know grad school and this business thing uh, and lots of other stuff, but. It's been a lot of fun, I uh, love the support, um, and I've been loving seeing all these machines out there that have brew by weight. It is a kit, which is super cool, so in terms of trying out other machines, some people have gotten away with that. I believe there was a Profit Tech machine that someone got it working on. Uh, it works on a lot, and it can work on a lot more, so it's a great platform. Uh, you can check out my website to uh, get hooked up with uh, what's all possible there. So yeah, I'll see you guys later. Uh, hopefully I can post another video soon when I can squeeze it in. All right, see ya, bye.